Uh, so, but I think we've somewhat lost our way. Uh, I feel like we need either Google Maps or GPS to find our way, but we've lost our way in terms of what that trade relationship is supposed to be about, how it is, uh, in those terms, mutually beneficial, how it really helps both sides of the transaction, and both parties benefit from that. And I think that's one of the things that President Obama is launching sort of wants to jumpstart our export potential in the United States, is to make the United States once again more of a producing country, a little more balanced, and a little less of a consuming country. We consume, the United States consumers, uh, about 70% of our economy. In China, it's about 36% of the economy. The five-year plan is looking to increase that to close to 45% and based on growth rates. Uh, China will probably fuel some of the largest consumer demand uh, the world has ever seen. And uh, someone involved in U.S. exports and someone involved in U.S. trade policy, uh, I like the sound of that. That would be very good for the uh, world and very good for the Chinese-U.S. relationship. And uh, so I think that that's something that uh, part of the reason I'm here on this trip is to explore how we can do better with that. And that's one of the areas that I think we can do. Um, a recent transaction we did at Exim Bank was with Air China. And I assume many people here fly in Air China. Um, and if you fly on one of their triple sevens made by Boeing, uh, there's a good chance that we finance that. And Air China represents also uh, an interesting I think, dilemma. And that is um, the market capitalization of Air China is larger than the market capitalization of every U.S. commercial carrier combined. It's a larger market cap than United, Continental, American, U.S. Air, Southwest, Delta, all of them, and I'm hard enough to fuel out the last of a couple of other airlines, all of them combined have a smaller market capitalization than Air China. And Air China has about half the fleet that uh, see its own American airlines. So I think that in America we sometimes look at this both with uh, both awe, uh, admiration, and some fear and trepidation. You know, it's, it's somewhat daunting when we think about how long those carriers can operate in the United States, the size of the U.S. market, and yet Air China has a market gap of equal all of them. So as we look at how we rebalance this this economy and how we rebalance the trade relationship, that's part of that, uh, what, we're trying to, what, what we're trying to do in the uh, Obama administration. And I think that when we look at um, uh, aircraft in particular, um, this has been a very strong market for both Boeing in the United States and Airbus. Uh, and now today, China is also building the airline industry. And the building the COMAC, the C919, which will be out in about um, four years and will begin to actually compete with, uh, in a major way with both Airbus and Boeing. So that's why I say there's both somewhat awe, somewhat admiration, and also a little bit of fear of trepidation in that relationship. Um, so if we just cut China, and my, our relationship with China is both as a customer uh, and also as a competitor, right? There are not many other relationships that we have quite as uh, pronounced a relationship between both customer and competitor. We compete with China, uh, we the United States, in Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, in many, and, and also throughout Asia. So many of those markets were also competing very much with uh, China. But I think that the new uh, the, the current five-year plan, the plan from 2011 to 2015, offers a real opportunity to rebalance that. Uh, it's, a, it's about rebalancing the Chinese economy. It's rebalancing the more on consumption and less pure uh, export growth. It's rebalancing with more emphasis on foreign direct investment. In fact, this is the first year that foreign direct investment by Chinese companies outside of China exceeded that amount that came in from uh, foreign. So that, that also is a, a large sea change. 
Um, we look forward to that at the Export Input Bank. Uh, we have clients in the United States, such as Siemens, that makes uh, power turbines in North Carolina. We help them export those throughout the world. We help companies like Gamesa, which is a Spanish company that makes wind turbines, and we help them export to places like Hungary. So one of the things that we're hoping as we rebalance this relationship is that we can also help these companies that operate and locate in the United States also export their products to the rest of the world. Uh, there's probably no more important bilateral relationship. President Obama said this is the most important bilateral relationship that we have in the United States. Uh, we have an annual strategic and economic dialogue. The next one will be in May of 2012 uh, in China, in between China and the United States. And uh, it's an opportunity to find better ways to work together. Uh, what we need to do is move from a somewhat five ways to be less bluntly adversarial. Uh, let, competition is good, but to be less adversarial and find ways that we can both work together and we can compete, but we can compete in ways that are healthy. I was a dean as I said, as Lenny said, you know, this healthy competition in the classroom that is unhealthy competition in the classroom. So finding a way to get that to a more um, healthy place is what we're trying to do. Uh, one of the reasons for my trip here uh, to China uh, this week is to find ways that we can also help with that at the Export Input Bank. We just completed uh, our largest year in the history of the bank. Uh, we provided just under $33 billion worth of financing, both through guarantees, direct loans, and insurance to U.S. companies that are exporting. Three years ago, it was less than half of that. Uh, so as the president has launched the National Expo Initiative to double exports in five years, we have actually doubled mobilizations in three years. Um, and part of that is because, one, exports are growing. Two, exports in the United States are going to more emerging markets. And uh, banks and financial institutions are greatly more reluctant to do so. Uh, and three, as you all know as students here, there's been a terrible financial crisis and credit crisis. And so in some ways, more business has come to us uh, than used to be done in the financial markets on their own. But one thing that has lagged is our work with China. Uh, this, in the last six months, we've completed about, six, three, uh, about $500 million worth of transactions. So that's a very good trend. But if I look back a year ago, we did $15 million in loans to sell exports to China. And the year before that, $22 million. So let me give you an example. Last year, our year just ended in India. We did about $2.1 billion dollars of the loans in sale of U.S. goods and services. Turkey, $1.8 billion. Dollars. Colombia, building a new refinery, $3.8 billion. Dollars. So although it's $500 million, dollars, it's still one, it's a, it was an aberration of two, it's still not enough. We are the, I would think, in the one to two billion dollars a year. Uh, and financings to help move more exports here to China. To give you some flavor, what we did last year, one, we did these triple sevens for Air China. Uh, secondly, we uh, sold a farm equipment from Case New Holland. It's a, actually a product that's made by Case New Holland and an Israel company, an Israeli company that is used for harvesting cotton. It's done through a framework agreement we have with the Ministry of Finance. Uh, and we also approved the financing for Hawker Beach for general aviation. Uh, you all notice there's more millionaires in there, younger in, in China than almost any place else in the world, 15 years younger than uh, uh, they are in the rest. Uh, the average age is 39. How many people are maybe not any younger? You are, you have money for that, you still have a chance to get the average of becoming a millionaire by age 39. So what we did is Hawker Beach Craft, which is selling a general aviation, one of the best companies that does that, we are financing through ICBC leasing and the ability for them to essentially put a fleet of Hawk Beechcraft aircraft on stations here in the Mideast to increase those sales. It's almost like four plan financing. So that's the kinds of things that we have done most recently. And we're actually here working, looking at the private sector to find other ways that we can further U.S. exports, both of, both of commodities, uh, all three, commodities, manufacturing goods, and services. 